Tonight, the healthcare industry is changing. Last night, we highlighted how telehealth is reshaping the future of healthcare at major hospitals. But for many people, their primary doctors have a private practice in their community. Tonight, News Force Cameron Taylor checked if COVID-19 is having a similar impact on smaller operations. At this doctor's office in East Nashville, the waiting room is empty. Doctors here say that's because more people are turning to telehealth during the pandemic. Before the coronavirus, Dr. Rosman Lewis at East Nashville Family Medicine never set up a telehealth visit. Because we believe that you get accomplish a lot more by talking to your patients face to face and that relationship that you have with them. Now she's meeting okay. new patients through the technology. Sure. Dr. Lewis says it's made a big impact, especially when people were told to stay home. We've been able to do a lot of checkups and mental health checkups with people very easily by telemedicine. Dr. Lewis says she's now averaging about a half dozen online appointments in a day. She's embracing the platform but says it doesn't solve all problems. It's very difficult to manage in a televisit way because you need to listen to their heart, <laughs> press on their abdomen, you know, so it's hard to do everything you might need to do otherwise. What's clear? Telehealth is changing the way Dr. Lewis operates her business. I think it's going to make it more accessible for the care that we can do by televisit. She thinks the technology is here to stay. Her normal routine forever changed by the coronavirus, especially when it comes to how many people can wait in the lobby and whether there's enough space for employees and patients. So I think where we can keep it, you know, by telehealth, I think we should. Cameron Taylor, News 4 Nashville. Tonight, one group of people saw their businesses shoot up in priority with Metro's reopening. Gyms originally were slated to be open in phase three, but now they will be part of next week's reopening. We asked Dr. Alex Jahangir of Metro Task Force what the deciding factor was in changing the roadmap. It seemed to be a reasonable place um, right now, um, as, as was shown by other locations. And we have a lot of experts who helped us figure out best practices in gyms. So we, too, love gyms, and we want to be able to get people to working out. And, and that's kind of what um, led us to that decision. Gyms have already been able to open at 50% capacity in the rest of the mid-state. Tonight, an East Tennessee hospital is responding. They received $121,000 in federal aid despite being closed for almost a year. We were telling you about this last night. The company's CEO says it's not a mistake. Instead, Renova Health CEO Seamus Lagan says he will put the money to reopening Jamestown Regional Medical Center. Despite being closed, the CEO says they still have some employees and they say they will work to make sure the money is used to fit the COVID requirements. Here's part of the company's statement saying, quote, we believe in endeavor to ensure the money has been used in accordance with the guidelines and terms of such relief, unquote. Two congressmen and Senator Marsha Blackburn have written letters to Health and Human Services mm -hmm. asking for investigations into how it could be eligible for funding. News 4 will be on top of all the reopenings very closely as our state transitions back into normalcy. The best way to keep up with all the updates and to watch live press conferences as well as on our News 4 app. He was stranded in a foreign country, stripped of his passport and money, and slapped with criminal charges. Tonight, a Shelbyville pastor answering questions about why he says he was truly prevented from leaving India for eight months. He granted that interview to our chief investigative reporter, Jeremy Finley. Pastor Brian Naren admits this was a moment he feared might never happen. Was there a point where you started to worry, I'm never going to go home? Early on, when they were threatening me with prison, 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 I was very worried. Prison after traveling to India 17 times. He'd arrived last October with two others, carrying $40,000 in cash to be used for Christian ministries. In customs, he says he was told this. The word he used was, is we've been ordered to crush every American Christian coming into India so they will never come back and they'll stop bringing money to the Christians in India. News 4 investigates found that India is cited by the religious organization Open Doors as the 10th most dangerous place for Christian persecution in the world. Do you feel you were the target of Christian persecution? Absolutely. While he says he declared how much cash he himself was carrying, he was still charged with failing to report it, temporarily thrown in jail and charged criminally, his passport seized and the money taken. 
He says six times he and his attorney made deals for his release. Each time, the deal fell apart. The uh, judicial system is corrupt. Everything is driven by bribes. Everything is driven by... I, I was robbed, extorted, and had to pay blackmail money in the end to get to come home. In the end, he says they successfully convinced a judge he was innocent. His passport returned, but not the money. <laughs> now safe at home, he says the hardest part was knowing how the ordeal was impacting his family, including his daughter, Laura, who has cerebral palsy. Will you ever go back? I cannot go back. There's the people who I do ministry with in Nepal and India, their lives would be in danger if I go back and I was seen with them. Plus, his wife Rhonda has already declared his travels to India are over. Jeremy Finley, News 4 Investigates. What a story. Well, Pastor Naren says the current regime in India is responsible for the hardline approach to Christian missionaries. He adds he's never had trouble before entering or moving around that country. Tonight, a recovery story we all need and a great example of why we here at News 4 call the aftermath of the March tornadoes rebuilding Tennessee. Two and a half months ago, the basement east was wrecked by the storm. A wall shattered and all that stood, if you remember, was the I Believe in Nashville mural. Well, tonight, that's all changed. Take a look. In the place of a wrecked wall now stands new brick and a sign that Nashville will rebuild. Here they are side by side as we take a look tonight. The music venue posted their rebuilt wall on Instagram earlier today. It was one of hundreds of buildings wrecked in Nashville during the tornadoes and now they stand whole. Still ahead, the search for baby Joe is back on the ground again tonight. How the community reacts to the resurgence of law enforcement looking for a young boy who will never be forgotten. And storms on the way for tomorrow. A forewarned weather alert is in effect. We've got the updated timeline where you live, and we'll talk about Memorial Day weekend, what you need to know before you spend time outdoors. We've got that after the break. Hey, coming up Friday on News 4 This Morning, it's Memorial Day weekend. A lot of people are going to be on the lake, including myself, and some simple things you need to know before you head out. That's Friday right here on News 4. And Jesse, I know you got our, your our mics oh, sure. open. It's kind of, kind of curious. So at the top, when we did sort of our little headlines, we had our voice do the breaking news, but it says in blue it's not there. Like we weren't going to do it. Were we supposed to do it or to not do it? Or because that's happened a couple of times. That weird delay is yeah. strange too. We've talked to them about it, but it can really mess us up. Oh. Gotcha. Need new furniture? Rooms to go will make it easier than ever to buy. You can shop safe, shop smart, and shop when you want at your convenience, in store or online. Now through the end of May, refresh your living room, bedroom, or dining room with great sale prices, interest free financing, and no minimum purchase. Shop your way, shop comfortably, and get free doorway delivery. That's the new way to shop the Rooms to Go Memorial Day sale. We want to bring you up to speed if you were just joining us tonight about this breaking news this after I-440 East and shut down after a shooting. Now, there's an investigation underway, huge police presence. We're live right there right now. And the original call came from uh, what you see right there on the left part of the screen. It's Pine Valley Road in Ashland City. I-440 shut down right near I-65 right now. You can see several cars along with police officers on the highway. We're working to find out what led up to this massive response. We're going to keep you updated throughout this newscast and, of course, tomorrow morning on News 4. A sudden resurgence in an unsolved case. The TBI out all day searching woods and more at Joe Clyde Daniels' home. The five-year-old boy vanished more than two years ago and his parents were charged in his death. News 4's Ryan Breslin was there all afternoon during the search. 
The search has calmed down for the day, but the resurgence of law enforcement back on Garners Creek Road bringing back a rush of memories for the community. It's like it's all happening again, you know. Part of me, of course, wants to cry because it just, it's so horrific. It's tough for the Dixon community to not be emotional thinking about Joe Clyde Daniels. At this point, everybody feels like they're a family member of, of little Joe because we've spent so much time uh, searching and so much time praying. The return of TBI to Daniels home Thursday, just another reminder of the last two years. There's not a week that goes by whether his name's not brought up. I still look for him. This particular visit is one people hope has promise. You're two years from the original interaction uh, and that's hard. A lot of things can happen. TBI working through the backyard to the backwoods, clearing brush and neighbors say even digging. Digging in the backyard. Trying to keep the investigation going. They say whatever the outcome of the search warrant, they hope it brings closure for the community and baby Joe. They're still trying and that's what I've been told too by, you know, people that are working on it. TBI will be here overnight. They are not saying if they found anything today. Ryan Breslin, News 4 Nashville.